Sawyer, I'm Jane Sawyer. Let's paper mache a dragon together. This video is a step-by-step -step tutorial that accompanies a free template to make one of these mounted dragon heads. You can download the pattern free, no strings attached on my website. I'll leave a link down in the description. Okay, we're gonna get right into it. You're gonna need a printout of the three pages of the template. You're gonna need a cereal box or some bristle board or other thin cardboard. You're gonna need a bit of corrugated cardboard, a roll of masking tape, some white glue, and some acrylic paint and other little crafty things. Oh, and I, just because I know some people will say it, I wanna be clear that uh, for me personally, I'm not seeing these dragons as ones that I, ostensibly like and then uh, stuffed and mounted on my wall. I've always kind of viewed this as like a bust you can hang on your wall or maybe like a good luck gargoyle. I'm sort of trying to honor these mythical creatures, not present it like I am a slayer of them. Uh, but you know, this is art and of course art is subjective and people will interpret it as they will. But I did just want to let people know that that is my perspective. Uh, so moving on, I've divided this project into a few different work sessions with drawing time in between. I just hope this helps you with your workflow or if you're doing this project with kids, uh, maybe it'll help you break the project into manageable chunks. Okay, enough talking, let's do it. Grab page one of your template and cut around the outside of the base layer of the mounting plaque. We're gonna cut two copies out of this panel I nabbed from a corrugated shipping box. You can see the corrugations run this way across the panel. Trace the shape. You don't need to mark the direction of the corrugations. I'm just doing it here to show you. Rotate the template 90 degrees and trace it out again. I use a sharp craft knife to cut these out. The corrugations run perpendicular to each other on each shape. When I stick them together, it's gonna to make the plaque super strong and resistant to warping. After cutting out two of the base layers, cut around the line marking the top layer. You can get rid of that. Trace and cut two of the top layers just like you did the base. All four of these get stacked and glued together to make the mounting plaque. Use an old gift card to spread a layer of glue between each layer. Well, this was a bit too much glue here. <laughs> put something heavy on top to clamp the layers together. We're gonna leave these to dry, but in the meantime, we can get set up with the rest of the template. I'm using an old cereal box to make my dragon head. Rip open the box and lay it flat. Make sure you've got pages two and three of the template close at hand. Pour down a puddle of glue and spread it out evenly on the cereal box with the gift card. Don't be afraid to be generous with the glue here. Lay down the top left corner of the template into the glue and gently lay the page down, working towards the bottom right corner. Use a clean edge of the gift card to laminate that paper down into the glue. Repeat that for the next page. So now we have to let that dry. So that's it for session one. We will leave it and come back tomorrow. Okay, we're back the next day for another crafting session. I'm gonna set the dry mounting plaque aside and bring in my cereal box. We're gonna cut out all these pattern pieces now. I like to do what I call an ugly cut around each of the pieces with a sharp knife. This just makes the pieces a bit easier to wield. It's really important to cut as accurately as you can against the cut line of the template. You can use a craft knife if you like, but I prefer to do this bit with a pair of sharp scissors. Cut out all the pieces in real time. This took about 15 to 20 minutes. Now we're gonna pull all the pieces with fold lines on them and use this technique with a ruler to crease accurate fold lines. You're gonna line up the edge of the ruler with the marked fold line. 
Press the ruler into the table and lift the cardboard up to crease it around the edge of the ruler. You can bend the fold back and forth a few times to make a good crease. We're gonna use a lot of short pieces of masking tape to assemble the template pieces. I like to rip up a stash of tape before I get started. This really helps to streamline the process for me. I'll set this little tape tower off camera and grab pieces of tape off of it while we're working here. Now we're ready to put this dragon head together. We start by closing the darts on the sides of the head and the ears. Grab the right side of the head piece and give the cardboard a bit of a bend and a scrunch like I'm showing you here. We're gonna tape this little gap together by butting up the edges and smoothing down a bit of masking tape on each each side. Really tighten each bit of tape and make sure it's smoothed down. We'll repeat this for the other side of the head and for both ears. Find the top of the head snout piece and bend it to give it a nice curve. We'll tape the left side of the head onto that top left corner, then add a few more pieces of tape down to the dart. Really bend the cardboard to follow the profile of the snout here and securely tape that down. Make sure the tip of the snout corner lines up with the corner of the face piece here. If it's more than a couple millimeters off, peel up the tape and try again. You might get a bit of variance based on the thickness of your cardboard, but it should be pretty close to what I'm showing you here. I like to add a few pieces of tape to the inside of the seam for a bit of extra strength here. So that's the left side done. Now we can bring in the right side of the face and starting at the top right corner, work our way down with the tape on this side too. Don't be afraid to bend the cardboard into shape. Now's the time to add a few pieces of tape on the inside if you want to. Next, we'll add the back of the head to this assembly. Line up the corners and tape along the edge to the dash fold line. Bend the fold along the jaw, tape it down, and then continue taping down to the tip of the nose. Move back to the opposite corner at the back of the head and tape down this side until you reach the tip of the nose. With both sides of the back of the head taped down securely, go ahead and tape up the gap at the tip of the nose. If there's a bit of space left open for you, just bridge the gap with some tape. This is how it should look. Set this head assembly aside for now. Bring in the neck and chest pieces. 
The top left corner of the neck chest piece gets lined up with the piece for the left side of the neck. We're gonna tape down this seam. This masking tape I'm working with today isn't the best, so I'm gonna throw a few insurance pieces of tape on the inside of the seam there. If your tape is better, you might not need to do this. Do the same on the other side of the neck, working from top to bottom. Grab the top neck piece and give it an S-bend. We're gonna work from the top left corner again, taping down the seam and stopping at where those little dashed lines meet up. Repeat for the other side. Again, stop at this corner. Give the body a little squish and round it out. You're gonna put a blob of hot glue on each of these internal triangles. Press the outside triangles down into the glue and hold them there until the glue cools. I like to throw a couple pieces of masking tape over the overlaps there. This just hides that seam a little bit. So here's our finished neck and chest assembly. The head sits into the gap just like this. I hold the pieces together with one hand and run a generous bead of hot glue around the seam. I'm also using masking tape over the glue. This helps to hold everything in place while the glue cools and I feel like it makes the transition look a little nicer. And that's the finished head assembly. You can set that aside for now. We've got to make the horns. I like to bend the cardboard against a ruler a bit to make it a little easier to bend. You can also use some thinner cardboard or cardstock to make your horns if you can't get a cereal box to work. Thinner cardboard might make it a little easier for you. I'm getting a longer strip of masking tape ready, then putting some hot glue on the inside of the glue flap. The flap tucks over the rest of the horn, and then I immediately wrap it with masking tape to hold it until the glue cools. Here are the assembled template pieces. I'm gonna leave them separate like this for now. At this point, you can immediately move on to session three or take a break here and pick it up later. Before we get onto the fun stuff, now's a good time to deal with the holes in the sides of the mounting plaque here. There's a few ways to tackle this. You can just cover them in paper mache. It looks like this, pretty nice and simple, but it takes a minute. You can also fill the holes. This one is filled with hot glue. Here's me applying a homemade glue and cornstarch filler. I actually wrote an article a while back testing five different types of fills for projects like this. I'll leave a link to that in the description. For this particular dragon though, I'm gonna take a tip from Neil and cover it in some glue roll and glue to give it a stony texture. Now is also a good time to add a little hanging loop in the back of our shield. I'm placing mine centered and it's three centimeters down from the top edge. Pew! Cut a bit of wire, bend it into a loop, then zigzag the ends. The bends in the ends just help the glue grip the wire better. Hot glue that down and then throw a bit of paper mache on top to blend it into the back. The next step here is to cover the cardboard head assembly in a layer of paper mache. I have a separate video that breaks down what I think is the best paper mache method. It'll tell you the best paper to use, the best glue, the way to apply it. It's, it's chock full of great tips and I think it's a great resource for you to check out before you move into this session of the project. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description. I like to start with the small fiddly pieces and get them out of the way. For the ear, I'm using small patches of paper. 
and painting the paper with a thin layer of watered down glue on both sides, then using my trusty paintbrush to really laminate that paper onto the ear. You can also use your fingers if you want. The purpose of this layer of paper mache is just to make a smooth, even skin over the cardboard and tape. We don't need to worry about adding a bunch of layers for strength or anything, so I'm just doing one layer over the sculpture. Okay, let's just do it. Okay, here are all the pieces done. If that went too quickly for you and you're interested in watching how I applied that layer of paper mache in real time, I've posted that as a separate video so you can check that out. The link is in the description. We're gonna let these dry and I'll come back to them tomorrow. The paper mache is now dry and it's nice and hard. You can give your dragon a little squish if things look askew at all, just bend them back into shape. If you wanna, you can glue these pieces together and skip right to painting. That's what I did with this dragon here, and he, I think he looks pretty cool. But if you want, you can build on this foundation to make a dragon that's truly customized. I'm gonna show you one option for how to do that now. I'm gonna use some kitchen foil to bulk out a few shapes on my dragon. I crumpled a bit into a long snake, and I'm tucking it behind the jaw here to smooth out that transition. The foil sticks really well with hot glue and you can trim it easily with a pair of scissors. If you have a hard time smoothing out the foil, give it a good smush against the table. This little shape is going to bulk out the dragon's chin a bit. I want him to have a bit more of a prominent beak so I put a little triangular shape at the tip of his snout. I'm using two longer tapered snakes to give him a more pronounced brow. I'm gluing the horns on behind those brow pieces, sitting right on that corner transition between the two template pieces. I don't like that indent in his head there, so I'm putting a wad of foil in there to just smooth things out a little bit. I think the side of his face could use a bit of flair, so I made these two crescent shapes and I'm sticking them right onto the end of the headpiece. I'm also using a teeny tiny snake of foil to add some meat to the top of each ear. I'll glue those ears down under the horns behind that brow piece I added earlier. Okay, I'm kind of liking this, so I'll add a layer of paper mache on top of the foil. It can be a bit tricky to get the paper to stick to the foil sometimes, so I use longer strips that touch the cardboard at each end. I've got this paper that's a bit thicker than my usual paper mache paper. 
This is from a paper grocery bag. You can see my regular paper mache paper is a lot more crinkly. Anyhow, I'm using some patches of this thicker paper to make some scales. I do that by coating the paper on both sides in glue. Fold the edge of the top down a bit just to give myself a clean edge and then I'm folding that into a little triangle. If you repeat this a bunch of times, these make some neat little dragon scales. So I stacked these on either side of the neck. Then I placed a few rows on each side of the face and another collection along the bridge of the nose. I used some folded strips of that thicker paper to build some armor plates up the front of his neck and chin. Uh, this part is completely optional, but uh, then I suppose all of it is, but I used a bit of clay from my stash to make a few teeth. If you don't make teeth, your dragon's still gonna look really cool. I just stuck these down and I'm using a long strip of thicker paper to make a lip. This is a really cool trick. Just fold the paper in half. I'm putting a little point in mine, but you don't have to. And then we're gonna flip that over and wrap it around the dragon's face. We'll just place it so those little teeth are peeking out from under the lip. Trim it to size and then blend the rough upper edge into the paper mache. these glass eyes that I picked up from Amazon. I'll leave these in my Amazon storefront in the paper mache basics section. If you're looking for cheaper eyeballs though, these glass bead thingies from the floral section of the dollar store work great too. Uh, but for this project, I'm gonna go with the fancy eyeballs. I hot glue these on and then I'm making eyelids in a really similar way to how I made the lip. Fold some of that thicker paper in half and then smoosh it around the bottom of the eyeball. Do the same thing to make an upper eyelid. You can play around with the placement to change your dragon's expression, and then smooth that down with little strips of the good thinner paper. The trick is to flip the dragon back and forth while you're working so that you can check and make sure you've got even eyelids on both sides of your dragon's face. I use a similar technique to make nostrils. Totally use your imagination and decorate your dragon however you want. These are just some options, but truly the possibilities are infinite. I wanted a bit more texture to transition to those pointy scales, so I cut some random shapes out of cardstock and glued them down to the smooth areas on my dragon. I think this adds a lot of interesting texture. Once you've finished customizing your dragon, set it aside to dry. This is the end of session four. Session five is quick and dirty. We're just gonna base coat everything. I'm going to be using a dry brush technique to paint this guy, so I'm choosing black as my base coat. I've added a bit of watered down glue and cornstarch to the black acrylic to make it really thick and gloopy. I slap it on there pretty thick. If you're gonna dry brush your dragon like me, you wanna make sure you let this dry really well before you move on to session six. When I do a dry brushing technique, I have my dark base and then I like to use two mid-tones and a highlight. I work from dark to light, making sure each color is dry before I move on to the next. It's not a lot of paint, so it dries really quickly. When I get to my highlight color, I really focus the color on the edges to add to that weathered stone look. Again, for the body of the dragon, I'm using two mid-tones and a highlight. I'm working dark to light, then focusing the highlight color on the edges.
Okay, everything is nice and dry now, but when I'm holding the plaque and the dragon together, I'm not loving the look. I think the shield is just too light. Okay, so let's try a couple of washes. Hmm, better, but still not loving it. Okay, how about let's try purple? Uh, this looks crazy while it's wet, but now that it's dry, yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. Okay, let's move on to finishing this bad boy. In session seven, we're gonna attach the head to the plaque and add those finishing touches. Attaching the head to the shield is deceptively easy. Cut a strip of corrugated cardboard with the corrugations running across the cardboard. This is important. Cut that into about six little strips. You're gonna fold these along the corrugations to make springy little L shapes. Put some hot glue on one side of the L and stick that in your dragon's head. You wanna line up that fold with the edge of the dragon there. Repeat this around the dragon's head, making sure the loose flaps don't interfere with each other. You can trim them if they're bumping. Put some hot glue on those loose flaps. You can go around the edge of the dragon too, and then very carefully stick the dragon down onto the shield. I find it's really helpful to look at it from directly above to make sure it's really centered because you only get really one good shot to set this thing down. Once the glue is cooled, you'll find this method is really secure. Completely optional, but I slapped a layer of clear coat on there. I don't know, I almost liked it better before. I think his skin looked a little more leathery, but what can you do? You can clean off the glass eyeballs with a cotton bud dipped in isopropyl alcohol. If there's any paint really stuck on there, you can gently scratch it off with the tool. If you want to, you can also cut a little secret hiding spot in your dragon. Measure from the bottom of the shield to the bottom of your dragon and then transfer that measurement onto the back of the assembly. Place a mark one centimeter up from there. Then draw a circle resting on that line with a diameter of no more than five centimeters. And you wanna very carefully cut through all the layers of cardboard. This is thick, so it's gonna take you a while to get through it. Be super careful. Uh, but once you get through, you're gonna have access into the hollow dragon's neck. This is a fun little hiding spot so your dragon can guard your treasure. I think a layer of black craft felt can really add a nice finish to the back of your piece, makes it look really polished and profesh. Trace the shield onto the felt and cut it out. Measure three centimeters down from the center top and cut a little slit to pass that hanging loop through. Now you can glue that felt down onto the plaque. Just remember to leave access to your hidey hole if you've made one. And there he is. Now you can hang your dragon on the wall, admire your work, and impress all of your friends with your dragon building skills. I really hope you give it a go. There's so many ways you could customize the base template. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more ways to make different looking dragons. Give this video a like if you think I did a good job. Leave any questions in the comments. I reply to almost every comment I get on this channel and I'm always happy to help out my viewers. Subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more affordable and accessible art info. I post here as often as I can. Again, you can find the template for this dragon and lots of other free resources and goodies over at jamesoremakes.com. Check it out, follow me on the socials, go make a dragon, and I'll see you on the next one.